So do you want to start learning the software that's used to make your own music? I'm going to take you through the basics with no experience necessary and give you a free trial of a piece of software so that you can work along with me. That's all coming up. Now I'm going to take you through the basics of music production software by explaining a few bits and then getting stuck in so that you can familiarise with the software nice and quickly. So here's what we'll be covering in the video. We'll go through a brief explanation of what the software does and then we'll look at how you can put sounds into the software like audio files like a backing track for example and then I'm going to show you how it's possible to generate sounds inside the software using something called virtual instruments. Also, I'm going to point out the basic layout features that apply to all music making pieces of software. So even if you don't decide to go with the one that we use today, you're still going to know your way around the next one that you use. So I'm going to direct you to a free trial of Ableton Live, which is a fantastic piece of software. It's used by the pros. Uh, you can download that now and then work along with the rest of this video. So what software is it that you're actually going to be using to make this music? Well, all music is made in a digital audio workstation, which is abbreviated to DAW, or simply said as DAW. Now what this is, is it's a piece of software that you can record music into, and then edit that music in. Now they do get a little bit more complex than that, they have a lot more features, but that's the basic gist of what you're going to be doing inside this software. Now some doors suit certain genres more than others, but it's mainly down to preference the one that you decide to stick to and use. The most common examples are Ableton Live, Cubase, Pro Tools, FL Studios, Logic Pro X and Reason. Now if you'd like a little bit of help in choosing which one's going to be best for you, then in the ebook that accompanies this video series, I've made a list of the pros, cons and made some recommendations based on the genre that you're going to be producing, so I'll link that up at the end. So, let's jump into Ableton uh, to demonstrate the rest of what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to look at what audio looks like and what MIDI looks like inside a door, as these are the two main building blocks for any song that you're going to be making. So if you haven't done so already, pop down into the description below this video, there's a free trial of Ableton Live. Go ahead, download and install that, and then you can work along with the rest of this video. Welcome to Ableton Live. This is what you're going to see when you first open up Ableton after you've downloaded and installed it. And it's important to note that there's two main views in Ableton. I'm going to explain this first one to you because it's pretty unique and incredibly powerful once you harness what it can do. So let's go ahead and hit these arrows in the corner, which is going to give us a little bit more space. And what I'm going to do is explain this main section just here. And it's a lot like a program that you've probably used before, which is Microsoft Excel. So in Excel, what would be columns, so the sections coming down here, are called tracks in Ableton Live. And you can create new ones by coming up to create and creating an audio or a MIDI track. You can see that as default, we've started with two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. Now coming across horizontally, what would be a row in Microsoft Excel is called a scene in Ableton Live. And lastly, what would be cells in Microsoft Excel are called clip slots in Ableton Live. And essentially what you're going to be doing is recording clips of audio or MIDI into these empty clip slots. Now I like to think of this section as where you make store and try out the building blocks for your song and then the next window is the foundation where you start to lay the bricks and build the house or the song. As I said it's possible to store audio in these clips and it's also possible to store MIDI which leads me on to explain how you can generate sounds inside a door using something called virtual instruments. Now virtual instruments are software versions of things that exist in real life like drum machines, and synthesizers. So what I'm going to show you now is a virtual instrument inside Ableton Live which is a synthesizer. So let's reopen this pane over here which opens up our library section and if we go to instruments 
we're going to grab Ableton Synthesizer, which is called Analog. Now in order to start using this, we're going to drag and drop it onto a MIDI track. And that's loaded the synthesizer just down here for us. Now in order to get sound out of a software synthesizer, you'll need to use a MIDI keyboard. Now a MIDI keyboard looks like a standard keyboard that you'd play and get sound from with its piano layout, but don't be mistaken, MIDI itself carries no sound. MIDI is purely a trigger that tells the synth what note to play and how hard to play it. So if you plugged a MIDI keyboard directly into speakers, you wouldn't hear anything on its own. It needs to be triggering something, like a software synthesizer or a drum machine. Now in order to get some sound from this synthesizer, what we need to do is tell it what note to play and tell it how hard to play it. And that's done by using MIDI. So let's go ahead and make a MIDI clip in one of the empty clip slots in the channel that we just put the synthesizer on. In order to do that, all you do is double click on an empty clip slot and you've created a MIDI clip. And that gives you a piano section down here, which is a virtual MIDI keyboard, which you can use to put notes in. So now what we're gonna do is tell the software synthesizer to play the note C four times. We can see the note C just down here and if we grab the little pencil tool from just up here, making sure it's yellow, then we're gonna draw four C notes in. So we're now telling that software synthesizer to play the note C3 four times in a row. Now I find this a really good way to put MIDI in because I'm not a very good piano player and this doesn't require you to be. So now I'm gonna show you what an audio file would look like inside a door. To do this, we're gonna pop over to the second view that's available in Ableton Live um, by clicking up in the top right hand corner. So let's get rid of the pencil tool. And these two tabs here are how you toggle between the two views. So let's give ourselves some more space again using the tabs in the corner. And now what I'm gonna do is simply drag and drop an audio file onto an audio track. So this is coming from my desktop. And there we go. That's how an audio file will look inside a door. So what I'm gonna do now is play a little bit of that track so that you can match up what you see to what you're hearing. And there we go, that's what audio looks and sounds like inside a door. Finally, what I'm gonna do is show you the main features that you're gonna find inside all doors, so that if you find yourself using a different one to Ableton, you're still gonna know your way around. Now, inside a door, there's always gonna be a section where you can see all of the elements that are in your song at one time, uh, and that's gonna be the arrangement view. So that's what we're in at the moment in Ableton. When you open up most other doors, the arrangement window is where you're gonna to default to. In other words, if you open up Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase, you're gonna open up a screen that looks very similar to this one. Next, you're always gonna have a mixer section, which is actually on the previous window in Ableton Live. So let's go up to these tabs just here, which lets you toggle between the views. And get rid of the bottom section just there for now. So this section here is the mixer. If we take that in as well, the four main components that you're gonna have in a mixer are a volume fader, which controls the volume of that track. 
you're going to have a pan pot which if you put it over to the right you hear the sound more in the right headphone or speaker pull it to the left you hear it more in the left headphone or speaker and you're also going to have a mute and a solo button so mute uh, is pretty simple it turns the track on or off and solo will allow you to hear just that track that's selected uh, and you can see the rest of them have been automatically muted so this is all that we'll hear uh, if we were to play that with audio and MIDI in other sections as well. Next there's going to be a section where you can select plugins which are little extra tools that you can put onto tracks uh, to make them sound better like equalizers like you'd see in a car radio um, and in Ableton the place that you select those is just down here so as a plugin section, instruments for virtual instruments, basically a place where things are stored. And lastly, you're always going to have a transport section inside a door. Now in Ableton, that's up on the top bar here. So you've got play, stop, record, and uh, this section here shows you where you are in the song. And in other doors that can either be in beats and bars like it is here, or it can be in time. It's also going to give you other important information like tempo or BPM. Now I hope you found this video on music production software useful. If you've got any questions then don't hesitate to get in touch via Facebook, email or here on YouTube. There is no such thing as a question that's too easy or too obvious and it's really important to ask away as much as you need. Now if you really want to stay on track learning this new skill then I'd recommend sharing this video with a friend get them in on it too so that you can bounce ideas off each other and work through it together. It's a really good way to stay motivated and on track. Now if it's your first time here then I'd love to have you subscribe so that I can keep you in the loop about what I'm doing to help you learn music production from the ground up. Now, I hope to see you all again very soon here on the audio journey. Take care.